Now, taking it up yet another notch. We were able to do this one pretty readily. Let's try something a little more tricky. What about not three bumps, but infinite number of bumps? We're going to need some way to figure out what the uh, transmission and reflection coefficients are going to be when I take the number of these potential bumps, these inverted square well bumps, to infinity. So you might want to pause and give a little thought about that one. How might we handle that? So here's the idea. Well, we just learned something, right? We just learned we can go from two bumps to three bumps. So certainly we should be able to do this type of a thing iteratively. So the first idea is we can go from, so it's going to be the idea then is going to be in two phases. First phase is we're going to learn how to get um, Tn plus 1 and Rn plus 1 from knowing Tn and Rn. Certainly we can figure that out. It's going to look very similar to the formula for going from 2 to 3. And then, though, what we can do is we can just keep iterating this thing forever until we get to infinity. So step two is we can iterate to n goes to infinity and then study the behavior for Tn and Rn as n goes to infinity. And if you had some inkling of something like that, you should uh, congratulate yourselves because this is a very, very powerful idea. That is our second Nobel Prize winning idea for, for this lecture. So that second idea, this idea of doing this type of an iteration is something known as the re- and studying what happens in the limit as you go to infinity. That's known as the renormalization group. It's often abbreviated as RG for short. And that was a Nobel Prize due to, uh, that was a Nobel Prize that was awarded to another Cornelian. Right? We have two Cornelian Nobels here, actually, because Feynman, as you guys probably may remember, was uh, an assistant professor here at Cornell for uh, a little while um, before the war. Now, Ken Wilson is another very important Cornelian, and he won the Nobel Prize for this renormalization group idea in 1982. So we're starting to catch up, right? Now we're only maybe uh, 35 or 40 years uh, behind, but we're getting there. So that's this really uh, powerful idea. And so let's quickly get down the appropriate formulas, and then we'll l learn a little bit about how we carry out these iterations. So to get Tn plus 1 and Rn plus from, from, from Tn and Rn, we've essentially already shown you how to do this, right? We would start with the answer for n bumps, like so, and I would bracket those guys all together. So this will become a Tn and an Rn. And then I'll have my little propagation region where I have my final bump, which has a net transmission and reflection of just T and R. And we iterate the same exact formula that we had before. It's going to be really exactly the idea going from 2 to 3, right? Except now, instead of um, writing down that it's... Uh, 2 going to 3, it's really just n going to n plus 1. You can repeat the argument for yourself if you want to double check, but Tn then is going to be, well, uh, I'm sorry, Tn plus 1. The next one will be the simplest diagram. Takes me across Tn, P prime, and through T, divided by 1 minus the ricochet, which is first reflect off of the far side, P prime, reflect off of the original n unit, and then the P prime. Whereas Rn plus 1 first reflects off of the n unit and then has this more complicated process that transmits through the n unit, propagates across, reflects across the single unit, propagates back across, transmits finally out through the n unit. And then we're divided by the same ricochet factor R 
p prime r n p prime and then the idea is we simply iterate this and the question then is to learn how we interpret what this formula is telling us as n goes to infinity